Okay, well, welcome. Um, so we're going to talk about Tailwind CSS and Drupal and uh, how it became our framework of choice. It's going to be a little short and sweet, um, but then if you guys just want to open up conversation afterwards, we're more than happy to just kind of talk about things because it turns out the implementation is actually very simple. Understanding and knowing how to use Tailwind, that's all the complicated parts. And there's uh, quite a bit of opinionated uh, you know, choices to make in Tailwind specifically. So we didn't, we didn't go too deep into that. Uh, I'm Brandon Ratzloff, and this is Stephen Williams. And uh, Conference Catalyst is our company, and uh, we do event management and association management. Um, and uh, recently, we actually did a presentation yesterday on a, our product, Conflux. And Conflux was a virtual, uh, virtual um, conference management application. And this is, this is what actually forced us into, into Tailwind specifically because we knew we had to create this new theme for this application that we were building. And so our choices in Drupal were very limited. Uh, there's not much out of the box that's going to give you this theme that, you know, checks all the boxes. But we had, we had to be very careful in that decision <clears throat> because if we, if we stuck with something like Bootstrap, we knew we could probably get to a certain level at a certain speed, but we would very quickly probably hit a roadblock of like what 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 we want to do next and be able to customize things. So we just dove we just dove head first into, into this tailwind thing. So what is tailwind? You want to speak to? Yeah. So tailwind's a highly customizable uh, uh, utility for CSS framework. Um, it's uh, packed with classes like Flex, uh, PT4, for padding, all your spacing classes. Uh, and uh, you can rapidly uh, build, prototype, build your, your applications. And, and he mentioned uh, our product, Conflux. Uh, when we started that, we um, <coughs> uh, were trying to decide what framework we wanted to use. I think that night, I went home and, and uh, Pretty much had the whole theme in Tailwind done uh, overnight, and uh, uh, we were like, yeah, "Okay, this is our framework. This is what we're going to use." Yeah. It kind of gave us confidence. I like to look at at Tailwind like if if you have all your CSS properties, you've probably got a class that matches that, and so it gives you that opportunity to build everything you know with those utility classes instead of writing any of your CSS. And then, of course, there's a whole lot of advanced behavior beyond that. Uh, we've actually, <clears throat> we are using 2.0, 2. Point something right now, but uh, we're about to implement uh, version 3, and uh, so as the versions grow, or, you know, grow, there is a lot more that they're kind of putting into core. Um, I think we used, we used a lot of different uh, plugins and things that now have just been consumed by core and it just makes everything easier So I'd recommend just jumping right into version 3 don't even bother, you know going going backwards I, I don't know the backwards compatibility is it like uh, Sort of there's there's some like refactoring you have to do um, uh, In your, your uh, style sheets um, Mainly because like some of the, uh, the layer um, uh, Functions or whatever were just uh, deprecated. Um, they're kind of like absorbed into the core. Where uh, like are your responsive uh, classes are just they're there um, by default now. Mm -hmm. So just going through some of these features, just the just-in-time compilers now just it's just built in. Um, the the colors you don't have to define those anymore. They're all accessible. Can you exclude colors or is, is that yeah? Helpful? So Everything uh, in version three, you have er everything available um, <coughs> right off the the start, and either uh, via uh, purging or uh, or whitelisting, you can um, start. Choice. Start, yeah, yeah. Start. Um, mm -hmm. And these and these variants, those are like the. Yeah, so 
in version two, you had to enable your variants. And now, um, and that got kind of crazy. Like you have this huge section in your config, um, like turning on the hover um, uh, variants for your Lights. spacing classes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that whole section was kind of bloomed up. And now you have all of that uh, available off the stuff. Uh, off the, uh, yeah, right out of the, right out right of the, out the box. box. Purge just uh, takes all that, all that out for you. What you don't use. Um, so actually starting a uh, Tailwind theme in Drupal, uh, it's pretty easy, but there, there is a project available, Tailwind CSS. We started there, uh, but it's essentially, it, you're going you're gonna to pull that project in and you're immediately going to uh, start customizing it because it's not something, because Tailwind, whatever you're doing in Tailwind is going to be very opinionated. So no, there's not going to be an out-of-the-box theme that, that covers um, all of your use case. At least there isn't at this time. We're considering maybe building something um, for this use case. So that's just a skeleton. This is, yeah, so this is a skeleton theme. And then if you, if you want to visit these two uh, GitLab spaces, we have what we, ended, what we wanted to provide is a starter for Drupal that in instantly like implements this actual project. So we've got a Tailwind starter project, and if you use Lando, you can just start this right up. It'll install Drupal, and um, and then you'll be ready to theme kind of right away. And uh, the actual theme that we're building is is also another just starter skeleton. Um, tight there for a second. <coughs> you go back to one slide. I'm try it again. Yeah, it, this yeah. is. This slide, right? Same one. Oh no. Yes, that was one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, our our uh, theme here. It's also a skeleton theme, but um, we're using uh, uh, Laravel Mix uh, for to build, and um, we have some implementation packages and stuff to support SAS. So, the, so they're the same thing, but one has some extra tip, uh, variables. Yeah. yeah. Some added functionality. So you can write some SAS if you want to. All right. So we're feeling from me. All right. Thank you. And we'll I mean, we'll probably put this into Drupal.org uh, at some point. Um, but the you know the whole namespacing thing, I don't know. We don't want to clutter it up. So, uh, But I did want to show just really quick kind of what comes with this. Uh, so. <coughs> Because you can pick and choose however many plugins and things you want to use, uh, we, you know we're trying to keep this very simple, and so our the config file is is uh, pretty small. Our, turn the lights on. So oh yeah. Two two dot two dot x is um, our config <coughs> our config file is enormous actually. So let me go back there. Interesting. Yeah. So really, this is the theme, right? Yeah. So the project comes with Lando, so you can Lando start and build that, and this will it'll pull in and build Drupal, and then give you this theme, make it available for you. Um, and what what is interesting here? So what pack? You want to go through? Any yeah, of this? this is our our uh, our uh, web pack configuration. Um, <coughs> we've added another uh, step process to compile SAS. Um, it's, uh, you know, Tellin, uh uses plus CSS, and, um, but we wanted the ability to, to write SAS, and we've got some custom modules that uh, we write SAS for. So we have, we've added that as extra um, uh, build stuff, but we also got uh, some of our compression uh, settings there to generate our, our uh, Broccoli and uh, uh, GZIP. Or files, whatever for yeah, and maybe we'll come back to this, but we'll also browser sync. Yeah, we'll touch on this, but I think so. We we did go ahead and implement browser sync, and what you're seeing here for this domain, for example, this is the the Lando proxy. So once this is brought up, you can go to this and uh, this URL and get um, browser sync working for you. Uh, Are they all share this uh, repo anywhere, or is it all yeah. private? 
Yeah, yeah this right here is public. <laughs> Let's see, what do we got next? All right, so some configuration stuff we just wanted to talk about. Obviously, we just showed you the config um, JS file, uh, but this is really this is really one of the biggest things you can do with Tailwind is this um, purging because you want the, the smallest file possible to load into your application, and this is this is an excellent implementation. So you know. yeah, a little uh, gotcha with the, with version three. Everything it is purged by default right out of the box. So I didn't realize that at first. I'm like, nothing's working. So, um, so yeah, I wrote this uh, little uh, snippet here that uh, will check to see if you're in a dev environment. And then it, you know, it will whiten everything if you're in that dev environment. Um, but as I was saying earlier, you can safe list uh, uh, some, some classes or core plugins, and you can also uh, disable um, core plugins if you're not going to use it. Um, so is there a user interface to check all this stuff on and off, or do you have to do it like in your config problem? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, their docs is, are pretty good. Yeah. They read, 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 read the docs. Right. Yeah. Don't need anything. Yeah, this is definitely, like, I want to start from scratch. I want full control, and, and you go from there. Um, so, so some real interesting things as far as it connects with Drupal uh, for this purging thing is that you you want you want uh, Tailwind in the build process to find all the uses of your classes. Like that's the purpose of this. If I'm not using a class, it's not going to be included in your CSS. Uh, and so with Drupal, it's a little weird because there are places in configuration that you're going to use uh, classes and such. So that's where. Like you want to set it up so it, it looks at in your template files in, in Twig, and then also your config directory. So your config sync directory, where you're using classes and views or, or fields or whatever you have configured, um, and it works really well. So it'll just go through your entire config directory, and if it finds those any class patterns, it'll go ahead and include that. I've added uh, we've added the the dot theme file. I'm not really sure if that actually works. So. Yeah, yeah. So like, if you have any pre-processing going on, and you're adding classes, you know, in your, in your theme that way, that one may or may not work. There might be some regex that you can write to. Them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got you. Yeah. So then, kind of to extend that, Drupal doesn't. Well, Drupal views specifically and other configuration fields, you know, they want you to be safe. So they they do not allow you to use the colon and which is Tailwind's default go-to. So if you if you have a class, um, you know, well, I don't know, think it's small colon yeah. or whatever. Like your responsive classes or the folder. What's that? Yeah, hover. Folder. Yeah, yeah. Your pseudo selectors, whatever uh, classes. Um, yeah, it will parse out that colon. So um, in that Tailwind config, you have the ability to change that separator. And we ended up using uh, double underscores, and that's worked well for us. Okay. It's a, you know, that the the class field in, in the views is pretty. It's kind of limited as far as characters, so it does, you know, eat yeah. into that character count. So sometimes, you know, when you're writing a lot of classes, you might run into that uh, you know, the space issue or the character limit issue. And and just speaking to that. Uh, so because Tailwind is kind of solving this idea of being able to write properties via classes, um, I, think, I think it's really accessible once you're past all the technical setup for, for a user. So we have content managers that uh, they can learn Tailwind, and then they can use it directly in, um, in Drupal in our applications that we build because we can expose things like block class. We can use the block class module or menu attributes. Um, layout builder styles and things where you can just start plugging in classes uh, all over the place and right into Drupal and then actually get so, get so your styles applied. Box, uh, or you to to what was the question? They come in as blocks. So that works. Like you're in the layout builder, mm -hmm. you bring in a tailwind block, so, a custom block or something. Yeah, so our we have a lot of, so we'll do a hard-coded template, and 
you know, might look like this. Like this is our Conflux application. But if I want, if I want to make some alteration, so for example, this is a, a view of our schedule in our in our application, and we we want to rapidly be able to not have to make a commit to Git and then change the theme uh, just for this site or just for that site. We want to have control over it in configuration. And so, you know, if you wanted to change the background of this or you wanted to take the rounded off, um, you could just go directly into, you know, your views configuration and make and make that change. So that was that's a very opinionated approach that we took. Um, and, and as you can see, like all of it's just sitting here, right in views. Um, but we do as best we can with com like component design and things in within Twig. Uh, so, but we just are very careful in which choices we make because you can't immediately override something uh, directly in Twig. You have to make that commit, like I mentioned. Um, so, so the uh, modules that I'm pointing out, the block class, menu attributes, these these expose configurable fields and things like that directly in Drupal so that you can just type in your classes and uh, inject this information. So it kind of gives us a style on the fly kind of approach. Yes, I do. Um, okay, so layout builder specifically, I think this is this is a area we personally want to spend a lot more time in, but there is there is a layout builder styles and uh, bootstrap layout builder in Drupal that I think they've done an excellent job with. Um, so that's a UI for yeah, it provides it provides a, a styleable or a, a UI for styling different things. I'll I'll just modules. use yeah I'll use this uh, this <coughs> example here really quick for us. Let's see if I can make this work. Probably a block is the best example. So if I manage attributes here like like for example in this particular case uh, there's all of this uh, these these fields that are injected into um, the template specifically when you're placing a block in layout and so having tailwind available you can immediately like this is, for example would be only adding a margin negative six on the large view and um, so we can kind of style things, like again, style things on the fly, and we use tools like this to, to just plug in whatever our settings need to be. Does it get challenging remembering where you like made the changes? Yes, actually, I love that question. So. Uh, what did we hard code? What what is in config, et cetera, et cetera? Um, so we run into that with because we have you know the Bootstrap layout builder, which provides that UI can uh, show that, but the uh, it provides that UI for um, you know styles, um, but it's kind of based around the Bootstrap. Mm -hmm. And so what he showed you was the block class and the menu attributes or uh, block class module. So you can set the same classes on either one of those on the same block. And um, if you have another editor, you know, that add, adds a class in the, uh, using that block uh, module or block class module, um, you can remove it. But it it could be set here, and uh, so you're like you're left with like, oh where did they set that? So kind of bouncing back and forth. So I. I would probably recommend using one or the other, and uh, uh, just to save that confusion. Yeah. So, so our ultimate goal is to kind of find a way to, to maybe make a, a more neutral approach to this. Uh, so, because we don't want to specifically support only Tailwind, but uh, I don't know. We'll see see how the future, what the future holds for that. But it's cleaner. It's cleaner, like having just markup yeah. in there, like. Classes. Right. Yeah. Anything yeah. else you want to show here? Yeah, this is uh, this is where you set your spacing and stuff. Um, so he had that margin, but you, you could add it here. And, uh, yeah, that's another good point. Like this, you could configure your padding and spacing, and then it'll 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 do this. But of course, with all the classes that you have available, you could just plug that in in like your your wrapper classes. So. It, 
point being, you need to define what it is your team should be doing, like this way or that way. So my approach would be, if you uh, click here, you can you can uh, disable uh, what you want available here uh, on this uh, panel. So you can totally disable all the spacing and uh, 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 border classes, uh, the ability to configure that in this UI, and, and use this just for your layouts. Um, there's a, a Tailwind plugin that we use. That push out the telling Was it this yeah. one? Yeah. And uh, that gives us uh, those, those telling classes, and that yeah. allows that, that module to work. I got another comment. I'm going to do the purple, so I'm going to ask my questions. Yeah. So, you're making those changes in the layout builder. That's only going to be for that one page. Right. Yes. Right. And, uh, or whatever, your articles. Your yeah, articles. it's very. So, articles so. Simply. That's the challenge. It's, context, it's contextual placement, and I want it to look a little different this time versus the next time I place it. So what we do is, well, the templating, the point of the templating is to say it starts this way and it always looks that way until I want it to be different. And then contextual, so that's kind of where we're focused on is with these layout tools is, is uh, I need padding here and I didn't need it, you know, it, by default. Um, you got a long paragraph. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple things we've kind of touched on. Uh, so use it, you know, I think we're all trained to use SAS at this point, and it's, it's like the go-to. Um, but I think we're, we haven't had to really use SAS at all in our implementation. So I think our next iteration, we're pulling that out. And I think in the project that we listed, uh, we are not using it all at all. So post-CSS is kind of our go-to. what Talon uses. And you can you can add some packages and stuff to, to get some of that same SAS functionality, like nesting and uh, variables. Next question. So if we use your star thing, would we ever update that name, or if we like you come out with a new version of this, we're going to manually update it, or we guys have like an update inside Drupal thing, so to speak? Yeah. So the it, the same with our our project is is even less kind of opinionated than that the one that's on Drupal.org. Mm -hmm. But the one on Drupal.org, so there's going to be a few overrides for, for like default tabs and, and some uh, form fields and things like that. Um, so the, the best kind of practice is to just take that and just immediately start customizing it. And then if you, if you see an update to it, it's kind of up to you to pull in, to pull in those changes. Yeah. Um, because I know exactly what you're getting at with that. It's like, well, I want the I want the updates, but you have to completely make this custom, you know, to to make it work for you, uh, because there are no opinions in it whatsoever. So, outside of just default default Drupal bits that you want to theme. So, uh, just a couple things we wanted to point out uh, that were really cool: Tailwind pseudo elements. <coughs> Stephen, you want to talk about those? Um, yeah, you can uh, set hover state or hover classes. Um, there's a whole list of uh, uh, pseudo classes, but pretty much everything, all the pseudo classes in CSS, you can pretty much uh, uh, prefix and, uh, and add, that prefix the, the pseudo class on any of the uh, Tailwind classes and uh, be able to style that state. Um, yeah, and in, in a in a way, I like I find that I find that easier because it's all it's all I don't have an example here, but it's all in the markup. So if you have a component like a button and you want to see it hover, like essentially your entire class list is going to be uh, you know readable in that section. So you're going to see what its initial state is because you're going to have a BG primary or, or a BG blue 500 or something like that, and then uh, you'll have BG 700 for hover, you know, underscore, underscore, hover in our case. And uh, so you can kind of see in a way, it's like you can read through your classes and know the behavior of, of the component, and, and which there's, is pretty cool. There's some uh, yeah, tell when you can add some plugins to tell them. And there's some that will uh, let you uh, do like your first and, and last uh, um, selectors. And, 
So you can do first, hover, and then march and bottom three. So you can build these, these long complex classes. And then again, like typography, for example, it's not something you have to use, uh, but it, it just helps you get a, get there faster with your yeah. default plugin. Yeah. 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 And in version three of typography, um, you can add classes to that container of, of your, uh, your pros, and uh, you can you know, do things like uh, pros, headings, uh, text bold, and all your you know, headings will have that, that uh, style. You can set all the colors for all your headings and links and all in that container. And I think one, so one thing we wanted to call out specifically because so much of Drupal is forms, of course, it depends on your use case, um, whether you're using web form or whether you're making, you know, your front end theme actually use any th forms because most of the configuration interface is on the back end. Um, but, you know, you're not going to be able to take Tailwind forms as a plugin and immediately make it work in Drupal because Drupal forms are just different. And, uh, in, the, in probably the most negative sense I can say. But, uh, so they're not just gonna look pretty like this. You'll have to do some work. Again, that, that base theme, the project on uh, drupal.org does help some of that. And we, we're gonna implement some of that in our project as well um, to try to deal with that. Uh, so your mileage will vary on that, but this is a plugin that'll help you get started for sure. And I think, so, so how do you make things fancy? You know, what what can you use along with Tailwind? So we wanted to speak a little bit on you know front end frameworks, and uh, we we like to use Alpine JS. Um, in, in a sense, it's very coupled with ta Tailwind. A lot of people use it. There's a lot of documentation. It was kind of I don't know. They're they're best friends. We'll look at it that way. And uh, it's a very lightweight framework. And you don't, it's uh, a lot smaller than something like Vue or React. And uh, in a sense, if you really cared to, you could say that it's, it's kind of like your next generation jQuery, but it's not really solving all of the same use cases. Um, so here's kind of just a, a I think it's just fewer, you do fewer things. Yeah, it's fewer it's things. More basic stuff. Um, it gives you the ability to do all this in the market. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a few, Things that you have to be careful of in in Drupal, but for the most part, you know you can use this directly in your templates, um, just like you would expect to with Tailwind. There's no Tailwind example examples here, but uh, we find it to be a very good tool for doing you know quick interactive uh, JavaScripty type of stuff. So we would recommend that. Anything else you want to say about this? Nothing. Uh, so then, you know, how are you going to, how are you actually going to work with Tailwind? Well, you're, if you're a front-end person, you're probably using VS Code. And uh, so here's a few extensions that we just wanted to point out. And uh, this lot, I mean, Tailwind is, a, is becoming super, super popular. So the support around it in the ecosystem is enormous. Uh, you want to start, obviously, with the IntelliSense, so it can kind of help you auto-complete things and and that sort of thing. Uh, refactor CSS is pretty cool. As you're going through your markup, it's, gonna, it's, it's going to see like things that you're using and uh, kind of highlight them for you. Uh, prettier, you want to? Yeah, and prettier is just to automatically assort all your classes to their recommended uh, class order. Yeah, I will say, you know, from experience, uh, sharing the dirty secrets. I think we could do a better job of this for sure. Um, you know, the order the order in which you place your classes in markup is kind of similar to how you might have used to write CSS and you want to say, well, the background property comes before uh, the color property or something like that. And it's kind of the same idea. You want to put your classes in the same order so that you know, maybe all of your, your padding and margins are at the end and the colors are at the beginning, something like that, just so it's, it's uh, you know, some kind of pattern, best practice you can follow with your team. I think uh, these two, the uh, Telesense and, and Prettier, I think those are uh, official uh, VS Code plugins, but 
Yeah, we use VS Code, but uh, I think they might have something for um, um, jet rings. Yeah, sure. PHP Storm. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, if you <clears throat> if you're not really interested in, in creating your own designs and things, Tailwind components, uh, component libraries are, are a very popular thing in front end, obviously. Yeah, so we use the, we, we so so there's these are just some that are listed, uh, but what we ended up doing is we actually purchased the Tailwind UI <clears throat> and uh, also Alpine UI, which we're about to implement as um, as components in blocks, and uh, so they have a list of dynamic dynamic components. Uh, but then the Tailwind UI is a fantastic resource for kind of any I don't know collection of yeah. of things that you might want to use. It CTAs. looks like you can get a React or Vue or plain HTML yeah. version of each. Exactly. Have, like, I think of them. The only uh, issue that I that I've kind of uh, ran into with, with using some of these uh, components is like they they don't have the accessibility stuff uh, you know baked in, no. uh, so you kind of have to go in and, and add your you know, your labels. And That's the same thing if you use Alpine rather than it. Yeah. Uh, so just some things that that we're looking to implement that we haven't got an opportunity to yet. Uh, kind of with this theme that this project that we're giving out to the public. Um, we, have, we have various products and we want to be able to centralize on this as uh, this is our framework, but there's, there's kind of some defaults that we want implemented in every one of our projects, but each project is going to look, have a different base theme, right? So uh, I think our strategy is going to be, let's have all of the Tailwind configuration, the build process, et cetera, uh, all configured, that can be the same across every project, and we pull that into each project, and then each project can have a, can have a sub theme that's based on, on that. So we're working those details out now uh, so that each project can look and feel and be designed in its own way with its own templates, but our base theme that we'll share across all projects just has all the compiling and all the configuration settings and, and things like that, um, and we're going to figure out a way to maybe inject different settings if we need to from, from the child theme into the parent. Uh, so those are just some interesting things we're kind of working on. And, uh, and we definitely want to work with, with uh, some kind of UI pattern library uh, management tool. So Wingsuit is one major thing we're looking into. There's other presentations on Emulsify and different things. But uh, you want to speak to Wingsuit at all, with what your goals are with that? Uh. Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. We, there's some more review we got to do. Yeah. Yeah. Just some ideas, but uh, you know, Drupal, the, the kind of the challenges that we face are, uh, we want to be able to give our content authors a way to see what it's going to look like, or what this implementation is, this style guide before they use our, our products, and we want to have that consistent across all sites, and uh, so that's kind of some of the theme work we're going to do as well as keep all of our components more or less unstyled in the base theme that is shared across all products, and then the child theme will come in and become opinionated and uh, say, well, this looks this way or that way. And I think Tailwind's gonna, gonna uh, really help us uh, work with that. And I kind of showed some things, but it, really at this point, that's, that's all we wanted to share. If you guys uh, wanted to see any examples or just discuss anything, we are too, good to chat about it. Conference catalyst. Uh, what is it? I don't think we even. You're not on Twitter. Yeah. No, the, the company. I am. Yeah, the company is, but. Yeah, I was just gonna share something. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. So then we're we're hiring, we're building products and and doing cool things. So we're moving kind of into, uh, you know, Drupal's been great for us, but but we're moving uh, into Laravel, and there's actually a stack called Tall, uh, where you're using Tailwind, uh, View, Inertia. And uh, so those are some cool things we're moving on to. So if you or you know anyone who's interested in, in working on some of this stuff, don't be shy. And uh, that's all we wanted to share today. So thank you guys for joining us.